Hello there everyone, and welcome back to Napoleon Total War 3 with the Ottoman Empire. Last time around we had a very needed decisive victory on the road to recapture Belgrade. So we crushed the Austrian army, and hopefully we'll be able to retake it within a turn. Um, with that said, we have loads of Russians on our northernmost front, and it's mm, not going really well because we're just going back and forth, and the Russians are much stronger than us, so that's certainly not uh, good that it's just going back and forth. We should be claiming territory after territory, but we're not. Uh, the good thing is, I guess, that at this point the Austrians will be completely gone, so I can focus more of my force towards the Russians. However, um, there I ha do have a fear that Napoleon will attack us. In that case, there isn't much I can do than try to stall him, but there will be an eventual defeat um, if I fight the French. Similarly, I had the same kind of problem when I played as Bavaria um, because suddenly I found myself very much surrounded by France and for France taking everything and uh, yeah, I didn't really stand a chance mostly also because the only troops I could recruit I could actually only recruit from Bavaria. Um, anyways, with all that said tangent. Uh, we're gonna fight over here. So Peter Bagration has moved in and he's got a nice looking um, army, or it's actually small enough I think that we will have a pretty good chance of taking it out. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and attack him and cut him down. So he's got about 3,000 men while we have about 4,000 men. He's still in favor, but I think it's much to do with the fact that he's got really heavy cavalry um, and really heavy artillery. But I can see that infantry is lacking a bit. Now, he does have some Russian grenadiers, which is going to be difficult. But it's not its not a um, insurmountable task that um, one might have thought of the last battle in the last video. Um, so I think we've got a pretty good chance. So let's go ahead and go ahead and let's go ahead and go ahead and defeat him. I don't know why I had to repeat that. I said it four times. Um, right, let's strike these Russians down. Our most veteran army takes the field against the Russians. Um, I've deployed cavalry on the flanks, cannons on this kind of high hill. We've got the older style infantry, uh, Janissaries in the back, and I've got the new model army in the front. With that said, let's go ahead and start. We've got Russian lancers sighted over there. They seem to have spread out their troops quite a lot. Quite a lot more than I thought they would. Before my cannons get off a load of shots against the enemy's cannons, I'm going to actually focus my shots towards the enemy cavalry, because I think those guys are actually the major threat. Um, we seem to have broken down some artillery pieces. We got one of their big um, unicorn cannons. They do have more though. We'll tell the howitzer to continue blasting over there. The cavalry is called into a charge. Certainly not going to work for them because they're going to charge straight into all that new model army infantry that's going to blast them to bits. Um, I think we'll advance. I want to see where exactly the enemy is. And given that they've spread out so thin it could very well be that we could um, t 
take them out one by one, really, or um, defeat them in detail, as it's called. They are, however, uh, amassing their troops at this point, organizing them in a much better way. I'm going to tell all cannons to hold fire and then reselect targets. I'm going to tell all my troops to halt at this point because we've got got dragoons coming through the forest. Probably should have hold that fire to a point where they were actually closer. They're gonna get a lot closer to these guys before I allow them to fire. Now! And most of those guys, two-thirds were lost within that. Seems like the Ulans want to try as well. I'm going to tell my men to hold fire, see if they can maybe reload a little bit. And then open up as the Ulans get closer. Cannon shots bounce through. And yeah, with that support of infantry, it goes uh, quite bad for them. And now their infantry is coming. This is going to be a lot easier than I thought it would be. Because the enemy is just handing me the victory. It's kind of interesting how they were spread out. They had some troops here, they had some troops all the way over here, and they have some all the way back here. So their placement of troops were abysmal. I can see Obligene, I can see the Grenadiers over here. I mean, riding down the Obligene is not going to be that much of a problem. The Grenadiers, are, however, have been sighted. But then again, I have my cavalry charging in on this side. Slowly breaking down the Russian uh, Obligene. We've got these guys retreating over here. Once this one goes, I'll be able to redirect my cavalry to charge on the Grenadiers. Most of the Obligene are now breaking down. I'm not entirely sure what these guys are lining. Oh, they're lining up to fire at the sappers of all people. Right, the obligenes are breaking down. Thing is, there will be a lot of friendly fire if I charge all the cavalry this way. We could instead go through all of these instead. Just a massive charge, and I can just push that all the way to Moscow if I want to. And this Grenadier unit is getting absolutely uh, destroyed by us. Poor uh, placement of those. Cavalry is pushing through. Seem to have gone stuck here on the Russian recruits. I do think they will eventually break as well. Peter Bagratsyan is moving up to uh, instill. Oh, he's even gonna go. He's even on the front line fighting with us to rally his troops. Not entirely sure which one of the. Uh, because everyone looks the same in that bodyguard group. Is it the old guy or. Uh, I'd imagine he had some kind of uh, some kind of marking to mark him out. Yeah, the cavalry got stuck. I don't want to retreat in the face of the enemy general. The grenadiers are gone. Forgot to uh, push up with a new model army. 
And then the old will follow, not that they're needed. Sappers. Just to turn against, to have something to stop them going straight into the... Into my, um... Cannons. I'm gonna see if I can push the cavalry straight through. The general is retreating now. These guys are about to open fire. My cavalry. Oh, it's a square now. It's a bunch of shit. We're gonna pull back. Why is he under attack? All the way back here, he managed to lose a bodyguard unit from a stray bullet coming from god knows where. Right. One cavalry unit decides to retreat. I think we need to speed up the advance of the rest of the new model army. As the Russians Really close. Are oh, they really going to stand that close to each other in fire? Oh, the enemy general is back. Our troops are about to break here. Wavering. Yeah, they broke. So I guess it was good that I brought up the second rank. Oh shit, they're attacking, the Obligeni is attacking from over there. Even with those few troops, the Russians are still able to... Uh, oh, they got my sappers. I guess I was a bit overconfident there with the early victories. They are pulling back now, once we uh, have actually set up some lines. They weren't, they were able to push, but eventually, you can only, I'm, you, yeah, you can only push so far. Get the cavalry back in position and we can try to sweep these guys away. It's a uh, losing fight for the Russians now. Poor morale all across. And here comes the second cavalry charge. Do you think we'd tell these guys to hold fire? And instead they will advance. Cavalry will continue. Are they within uh, canister range? I might ask. Now we can charge for the last unit over there. That one surely will break just under the cannon fire. We definitely need more close support of line infantry to break these guys because the, inf uh, the cavalry alone cannot do it. So 
So when I get these two up here, at close range, being able to fire, Peter Bagration is able to leave the field. With uh, Obligeni, or no, recruit musketeer unit is rallying back there. We need to hold them in place for these guys to be able to open fire before I tell the cavalry to retreat. Our men are running! Surprisingly weak volley by uh, my men. Alright, keep after them. Cannons will hold fire as we're probably more likely to shoot our own men at this point. Very tired, yeah, but probably not gonna... do much in charging that unit down. New model army move up trying to flank. Do we have we do have range with the howitzer that might be enough to break this unit. It is in a spot where not a lot of them are falling. I wonder if in the cover of that attack will move up and will actually bayonet charge them. Normally not advised to charge Russians, but they're always there's always a first. It's the last unit on the field. The general has left and we got about a thousand men or so charging these guys down. And yeah, pretty quickly they are routed. And we are victorious. We almost blew up our own men there. But we have victory. So I guess the main problem with this battle was that I left the cavalry fighting here for way too long without the infantry support. Um, something that I blamed the enemy for in the start of the battle. So, <laughs> it, it was, um, yeah, I didn't even take my own lessons into account. I was just chastising the enemy for poor um, troop management, and then I do the exact same mistake. I thought, though, I was going to be able to break through and just go through all of those units. But clearly, the cavalry was too tired at that point. And also, it wasn't a militia unit, it was uh, an actual line infantry, even though there were recruits, I believe. But that, plus the fact that they had General Bagration himself staying in the fight, fighting, cutting down our cavalry. Um, yeah. Quite unnecessary losses on a lot of the cavalry units. Should have withdrawn withdrawn and brought up the infantry um, but yeah there we have it victory nonetheless and here we have the uh, battle statistics we lost about 800 men while the enemy lost about uh, 2200 leaving 600 Russians left while we still have a, f a real sizable force a lot of cavalry uh, the cavalry took a big hit. Um, chevrons gained. We have some infantry gaining chevrons. So when eventually uh, infantry will get chevrons. Highest kills goes to the cavalry. Um, and one infantry unit. Two cavalry units and one infantry and then cavalry again. Um, highest losses. Um, I think this is, uh, yeah, this is one of the cavalry units end up in third place, so that's certainly not great. Sappers almost got destroyed. But, yeah, we got a victory, and apparently, even though it was just a close victory, it actually got a marker on the map. Which, 
I definitely don't think that should have gotten a marker on the map. Uh, same with I think this one wasn't that great either. This one, however, I that one I think should have gotten and it got a uh, marker on the map. But a lot of the other ones, like this one, this one, and this one, certainly shouldn't have. Um, in that it's a um, cool and decisive battle. It is a battle, but you know it wasn't like, damn, this is an heroic battle. Remember this one. Um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and end turn, and we're gonna see what the enemy comes up with. Hopefully, nothing good. Oh, another sabotage of the troops in Sevastopol. Well, who could have thought? Um, I mean, these troops must be really tired of getting their shit uh, stolen, burnt down, disappearing. Um, but there's their own fault. I mean, it's been going on for a year and they haven't been able to do anything about it, so it's their own bloody fault. Uh, am I creating any more boats? Because I feel as though I shouldn't. We built one new 32 gun frigate. We'll move that over to make our fleet a little bit more impressive. Um, but it is rather shit with just the morale of it. Uh, the most interesting thing is gonna see what's happened here. So they have entrenched themselves but there's no sign of uh, reinforcements coming in to save them. So we would definitely be able to take that back. Over here more Russian forces have are turning up this way. Um, we need to move down and fight these so they don't take over. Same time I can see this one can move up and take this. Create kind of a diversion and hopefully drag some of these armies north again. Um, but for this episode I think we can actually squeeze in this battle as well. Um, so Kerr going after his very decisive victory over Johannes Joseph is now gonna take on the offensive and see if we cannot take Belgrade. So without further ado, let's strike down the Austrians. The ex it's the exact same map as uh, the last time we fought here, just that we are attacking from a different direction. Uh, when the Austrians took it, they came from this side. Now we're coming from in from this side. Kind of the same side we retreated off into. With that said, let's go ahead and uh, move forward, shall we? I've placed all the normal infantry up front and then the uh, militia type unit in the back. We're gonna advance straight forward. And we're going to see if we cannot break them. Looks like the Austrians made their formation over here. With a lot of their troops. Which is kind of interesting because I placed my, all my cavalry over here. I wonder if... I wonder, wonder... If I could... Charge in all my light cavalry surround that and destroy it but I don't think I will be able to I think we do need the infantry to come marching in and aid us with that guard dragoons and guard dragoons and some reserve unit it's been spotted ahead of the my main line hussars Given the distance the enemy is at, we're gonna hold right here, and we're gonna wait for them to get closer. Fix the line a little bit. Run to your positions. The 
They're getting closer. It's quiet on the line. Everyone's marching. Just looking at each other. And then... Any second now, it's time to uh, open fire. Okay, we shoot some of our own men. And there. At point blank range. Oh shit, I forgot to... These guys should not shoot and I think... Cannons are just shooting our own men, so that's not very great. The cavalry was destroyed rather quickly. The infantry, however, not so much. They only lost six men. And they still got the Austrian Chevaliers. I don't know why this little unit decided it's going to be bold and move across the road. You guys need to move up. The enemy cavalry is back. I think it's time to mobilize our own cavalry. As the enemy is kind of pinned. We're gonna have our light cavalry come in. And attack them. They're kind of uh, concentrated there. Kinda. They, all of their troops are there. And here comes our cavalry charge. Cutting into uh, the Austrian lines. And if they try to retreat, they move into all this murderous fire. Well, not that murderous, but um, all that fire, I could say, instead. Okay, so the cavalry, local partisans were cut down. Slowly these front units are getting cut down by our light cavalry. The general decides to join in the fight. Maybe inspired by uh, Bagration. Turn in, don't let them open fire on us. I think we can overwhelm them. Just by our sheer numbers. If we charge in. The grenadiers are going to be the hardest ones to break. But just the shock. Of having so many men come down at them. It's just overrunning everything. And rather quickly, the battle is won. The partisans run. We have a little group of Grenzers coming back. But I think they'll just run by the sight of all these troops moving forward. Clearly not, so I'll have to order my men to charge them. And there we go. Victory. There goes the officer. And boom, that marks the end of the battle for the Austrians. And with that, I do think it's time that we end the video so let's go back to the campaign map and see how it goes now that we reclaimed the Balkans and the city of Belgrade we only lost 350 men while inflicting 1211 casualties on the enemy 
Highest killers goes to light cavalry, but also one of the infantry units. Managed to kill 104 enemies while only losing four. Great stuff. And um, Belgrade is now ours. Again. Go ahead and repair that. Resupply rate in the region is really great. And as we can see, there's no Ottomans on the border, uh, no um, Austrians on the border. And this time around, I think we can actually, um, I think we can actually uh, move and try and take Klausenberg, Transylvania, go after those vampires. But with that said, we're going to end the video right here, I think. So next time, we're going to be focusing more over here and hopefully we'll be able to turn it up against the Russians and hopefully, fingers crossed, the French will not attack us. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!